I'm uh, here today with uh, Bern Bunch of Excitron. Hi Jim, how you doing? Pretty good. And uh, we're going to be looking at an evaluation platform for the uh, 9612, Fan 9612 from Fairchild. Uh, Bern got interested in this a uh, well, month and a half ago after uh, working with a little bit on the Fan 4800, 4802, and the 4810. That's and correct. You can tell us maybe why you got interested, Vern. Uh, we had to uh, because most power supplies that one can purchase off the shelf are completely inadequate for driving large stepper motors as this 24-pounder uh, over here uh, that we manufacture with our electronics and controller on top. Is uh, Most power supplies have the problem that when the motor starts and stops, the power supply will shut down. As a result of over-voltage protection? Mostly because current. of over-voltage protection. Okay. Uh, so what we set up is a, uh, a working demonstration here and a development board with uh, some safety transformers. This is the, the Fairchild Fan 9612 development board. And so we're currently feeding it 110 volts AC, just like an ordinary wall socket. And we have a little module to convert the 400 volts DC output of this uh, fan 9612 dual uh, interleaved power factor control chip and that uh, 400 volts DC feeds into a module that converts it to 50 volts so on the meters here you see the input is uh, about 120 volts AC uh, the amperage is currently zero because there's no load and this is the output voltage showing 50 volts uh, so I'm going to run a little demonstration here, zoom in. where the motor control is, is cycling first one motion profile in one direction, then going in the opposite direction at twice the speed. It's making rapid starts and stops, and that is the shows uh, the problem of other power supplies is that uh, this is the very first one in I would say in the world that does not quit when this large heavy duty motor comes to a start and stop. You notice it is, it's, keeps on running. And you notice that the voltage is not wavering uh, more than half a volt there perhaps. If that. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, output voltage at your motor. Uh, temperature tested all the components here on the fan 9612 and probably the most important feature that we wanted to have is that the power supply keeps on working. Number one. Number two, that is very efficient. So we're looking at about 98% efficiency here uh, with these components. Uh, we are doing a design that will allow me to turn this off. That will take this uh, relatively large size and compact it down to uh, roughly three by two by, uh, I'm sorry, three by four inches by one inch thick. Uh, we can do that because this, this chip's amazing with how little heat it produces and the components that are part of the power supply for it. Yeah, just outstanding. So two major factors. The efficiency here allows us to make this a very compact power supply and we intend on mounting that on the side of the motor here and integrating that with our uh, power drivers and uh, smart computer that's inside for driving the motor. So we expect all this to be up alongside of here. It'll be a tremendous package. Let's just go into any uh, features that were really important about the FAN 9612 and your application. Well, the FAN 9612 does have some fake features built into it. It's got virtually every control possible, like soft start, is settable. Mm -hmm. uh, simple resistors, the value of these resistors and capacitors determine uh, uh, the soft start, uh, the output voltage, the input uh, voltage, uh, the switching frequency. Mm -hmm. uh, and it made it very easy with the uh, the spreadsheet that Fairchild provides with this chip in order to select the components accurately and quickly right. and, and just literally do hundreds of iterations prior to even making a prototype. Yeah. So we can really home in on the final design and we're just saving a tremendous amount of time. Right. Now this, this supply or this controller also has a feature of uh, for for zero or low load condition that'll go into a um, uh, automatic 
and they reduce the uh, the phase to to single phase. And is that is that a good a good thing for your application? Uh, yes, it is on the low power end. Because mm -hmm. uh, you'll have a lot of downtime in the motors at sitting here waiting for the next command or whatever. Exactly, Jim. Okay. So uh, the feature of the dual, you know, the for the yeah. power factor correction, is that when one is firing, the other is not. And that the two working together will cancel out a lot of the electrical noise that's generated. Oh, that's another good point. Therefore, the input filter is a lot less in mm -hmm. size and a lot less power is that, therefore, wasted. Wasted. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So ripple ripple currents are way down uh, as a result as a result of the interleaving. Um, so your output stage. Um, well, today you got a DC to DC converter. But you're you're thinking about moving into a off the sh or more of a, a chip level design on that as well. Oh, that is correct. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, device back here is small, uh, but not efficient enough. So we we're looking into uh, uh, adding an additional Fairchild pulse width modulation circuits that would be attached onto the rear here. And yes, it's a little larger, but our goal there is to make it more efficient mm -hmm. uh, because this will waste about 12 watts at high power. Okay. There's 320 watts output at this moment. So 12 to 15 watts wasted is significant to try to uh, remove that heat uh, from the side of the motor. Uh, and that would enhance our controller uh, admirably because our controller generates virtually no heat whatsoever. Okay. And we would also like to have a power design that matches that characteristic. So we're looking into uh, various Fairchild pulse width modulation circuits, and the key parameter there is efficiency. Uh, but they are also like the fan 9612, because it's really a simple circuit. You have these very large components, but otherwise it's down here less than a square inch oh, of yeah. tiny little parts. Mm -hmm. uh, easy to set up, easy to make changes. Uh, pretty much all the parameters of frequency, voltage, soft start, uh, current limiting are mm -hmm. all uh, settable. And then your output stage, you can have a 48 volt motor or 50 volt, 48, 24 programmable output. Yes, we'd like to end up with a programmable mm -hmm. uh, 24 to 48 volt output, uh, which just doesn't exist on the market today. Uh, we'd like 24 volts for the, the, the stronger, slower speed running when the amperage uh, needs to be higher. Mm -hmm. And then the 48 volts allows very high speed and very high torque. Okay. It flattens out the torque curve and extends the operating range of the motor from, uh, well, let's say, five to 6,000 steps per second to eight to 9,000 steps per wow. second. And that's power, because when you mount that inside of a, a piece of equipment, now you can have additional gearing in the ratio, mm -hmm. because the motor's gonna spin faster. Right. Now you can have more torque. And it's always about torque. Uh, users uh, for hundreds of different types of machines and applications want more torque. Okay. And you just simply can't put a, a gear ratios on the front because you reach a point where the motor will not turn, therefore the output doesn't spin fast enough. Mm -hmm. So the two have to be balanced, All the right. torque and the speed. This power supply configuration will allow that to happen very well.